In honour of Counter-Strike's 20th anniversary, Valve added the 1.6 version of Dust 2 back into CSGO's casual play. But it's not completely faithful to the original, so I've been working on it to try and restore it even more. I'm a big believer in preserving history. Obviously the best way to do this is to keep 1.6 up and running, but I also think there's value in porting 1.6 maps across to CSGO's workshop to make them instantly accessible to fans of the newer game. So I decided to try and make a version that's as faithful to the original as possible, right down to the murky, depressing lighting. I did all this for fun, working late into the night to try and get as close to the original lighting as I could. And it wasn't as simple as just using the same colour and brightness as 1.6 did. The original map's sun colour was mustard yellow, if you must know. But the problem is that Source does things a bit differently. You see, there's this thing known as radiosity. When light hits something brightly coloured, like, say, this orange sand, it bounces that orange glow around, lighting up the surrounding area. Source happens to do this a lot more than 1.6 did. You can see this most noticeably in the tunnels. The light spills into them, whereas in the original game, it did not. I even added brushes that block lighting across the entrances to reduce this. But even the lights inside the tunnels, although blue in colour, end up bouncing orange about the place. It's crazy. Something that did help with the outdoor areas was to change the sun's colour to... green. A green sun. And sky. This helped the light to look a lot more like 1.6 did. I understand that this won't be everybody's cup of tea, which is why I've got two maps on the workshop, the other using the more appealing and more realistic orange and blue lighting. Blue is more realistic because most of the sky is blue, which gives areas and shade a more bluish tone when compared with the original's mustard yellow look. Valve lazily used an entirely white texture for the lights indoors, but they did have a proper texture in 1.6. I used this one, each face had to be stretched and aligned manually. Sadly, this textured look resulted in a light that had shadows on it. As luck would have it, you can make an object glow in CSGO. Using this and some block light brushes, I achieved this, which we'll have to do. And I felt the lighting from it in Valve's port was too harsh. This was caused by the light entity having been placed too close to the wall, so I moved it away a bit to return it to the softer glow seen in 1.6. I also made the lighting more blue in colour to counter the orangey appearance to the indoor sections of the map. But lighting wasn't the only thing I worked on, for the original map has many details that were not featured in Valve's port, like the famous Gooseman spray on Bombsite A, or a shout out to Mac Man at Long, who was the guy who made the texture pack used in many of Counter-Strike's early maps. In CSGO, these would be decals, a see-through texture that you can simply apply to any surface you like. This makes them very easy to use. But for some reason, the ones Zool provided me for this map were not like this. They were instead painted onto the texture files themselves. As an example, here's a normal door. And here's one with a decal clearly painted right onto the texture itself. Why was it done in this way? Was this a limitation with the Half-Life 1 engine? Unlikely, since it clearly supported transparent decals. Could it have occurred when the textures were ripped out of the original map file? Maybe. But here you can see two separate sprays shown on the same texture. And this makes me think it's just how MacMan preferred drawing these kinds of details at the time. As the texture artist, it would have let him avoid the hassle of dealing with transparencies on his end. But this is all speculation. I simply got them and placed them back into the map from whence they came. But since they were full textures, this involved manually placing, resizing and lining them up, then trying to hide the joins between them and the surrounding textures. A lot of these use stretched textures. I tried to keep them as faithful to the originals as I could, but there may be subtle differences between them if you look hard enough. Special thanks to Zul, as he was the one who ripped the textures out of the original map file. I'm not sure why Valve made the textures look deliberately blocky. This isn't Minecraft. As I said in my previous video, even CS 1.6 would blur the textures, unless run in software mode. Ultimately, I made the decision to blur them for my version of the map, in order to remain faithful to 1.6. This meant removing a line from each texture file included in the map. I guess if you wanted to, you could add it to other textures to make any map from CSGO look pixelated. There's a project I'll leave to somebody else. There are only 28 textures in this edition of Dust 2 though, so it didn't take me too long to remove it. Other things I did included lining the map up to where Dust 2 normally is in the editor, which makes comparison shots or demo replays easier to do. While all versions of Counter-Strike pre-bake the lighting, new in CSGO is the real-time lighting. It only kicks in at closer distances, but it results in sharper edges to shadows when compared with 1.6's pre-baked, blockier looking ones. I did several things which should have removed these sharper shadows, but none of them worked. So I instead forced the game to kill, literally kill, the entity that controls the shadows. RIP. The lengths I went to to make this map look worse. Manfred reminded me that, 
by being stood on the very edge of the A site, you could plant the bomb on the ramp in 1.6. To recreate this I tried extending the bomb plant area, but CSGO unfortunately requires that you plant it when stood on the ground. I next added a player clip block that you could stand on, in the hope that the C4 would fall through that to the ground below, but it did not. So the only way I could have let the bomb plant here was if I had extended the bomb site down the side, but this would have given terrorists a very easy place to plant from, which was not in the original. So I returned the plantable area to how it was before, and accepted that this is one bug that would not be able to port across into CSGO. This game's too damn bug resistant for that. How many of you spotted some missing crates at CT spawn? For some reason, Valve didn't include them in their remake, so I added them back. Let's move away from Dust2 for the moment and over to Nuke. This is a map situated over several floors. This is difficult to show in a single radar image, so a few years ago Valve added support for multiple radar images in a single map. These would show up depending on which part of the level you were stood, but it turns out this technology is useful for more than just showing two different floors of the same map. It can be used to show two entirely different map images, if you want it, though in this case they both still happen to be Dust2, still a cool way of using it. Not that any of this matters because for this Dust2 remake I chose to use the map's original radar from 1.6. You can't just drag any old picture in because it wouldn't line up with the map, so to save myself the hassle of making the radar entirely from scratch, I simply found an image of 1.6's radar online, resized it to perfectly fit over CSGO's, then replaced it. And there you have it, the 1.6 radar, but for CSGO. I always enjoy doing small projects like this, it's a welcome break from video editing, helps me to learn something new about Counter Strike's history, and also gives me an excuse to spend some time chatting with others from the community, in this case Zul, who helped a lot with this. Check out his CSGO mod in the video's description, which is like 1.6 but for CSGO. I consider this port of Dust2 from 1.6 to be finished, but will of course update it if there are any bugs or problems discovered with it.